Hey, welcome guys to another little tutorial. Now, today's tutorial is going to be over DLLs and things. Because, well, DLLs are fun, right? So, ultimately, we want to be able to compile a DLL so that we can, you know, change up stuff and things of that nature. But the problem is, when it comes to Unity, Unity doesn't have any natural way of injecting code after it's been built, okay? So, after it's been built and everything, you get this nice little folder here and the application and you run it and, you know, it's all good and all, but the problem is, if you want to change anything, you have to rebuild the whole thing and then you're like, oh my gosh, why in the world would you have to do this, right? So, we will do a DLL right here, okay? I showed you guys this method of making a DLL. And if you don't remember it, and we have no virtual studio. Oh, that's odd. But we can just wait for this thing to pop up. And... And, you know, I mean, there's some cool stuff. There's resources. But it's it's in a format that's not readable for us. Okay? And this is uh, debugging stuff. You know, we got these assets, assets, assets. And, you know, I mean, there's a mono DLL. And then there's this thing here. I mean, there is some DLLs. I'm not going to lie to you. There, there are. But... There's no native way of changing this, okay? So ultimately, we have to do something about it, right? Now, I have this FPS Gaming DLL. Now, this, this DLL is coming from my solutions right here. Just our regular old thing here. What's this? Oh, this is saying that I've got two, which is the DLL's fault. Okay, so we'll go up to here to assembly C sharp. But make sure you're on the release, not the debug or nothing like that. I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to tell you to go ahead and put it on release. Okay, and you'll just go into properties here. Now, whatever you name this, like FPS. Field day or something, and then the namespace or G mon test, and you could do a, an icon, an application info, and stuff like that. You know, a file version, assembly version, trademark, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, and you are going to Go up to here to start right here sorry I can't make it any bigger I don't have the tools for that and this is going to compile a DLL and make sure it all matches you know the 3.5 framework you know. project Type class cannot be started directly. Yes, in order to debug this prod. Well, that's kind of weird. Shouldn't be in debug. Huh. Should still work. Now, we're going to be in release. Okay? Now, the release. Okay, for it will be in not in the manage. You'll go into your projects, go to object. I don't want to be in the debug junkie. It's gonna be in release because we put it set it up for release. Now whatever you named it, it'll show you a DLL and debug database stuff. This debug database thing doesn't matter. You can delete it doesn't care okay it's just basically for this 
this junk here. Alright. Which is no big deal because we're not going to be editing it for this. Okay. Alright. So you'll have this DLL and on this side it will say application extension. Okay. Now this file is what you're going to move into your Unity project. So you'll open up a window, okay, and I'll just not delete this one yet, because then it'll force it to do. You'll drag it into your Unity project like so, and then it will start its whole doodah thing, okay? But I'm going to show you something else as well. I'm going to tell, show you how to uncompile it so you don't need to do all this other junk. Okay? And I'm just going to let it delete this. Okay, so we've got our .NET thing. We'll reload all the assemblies. Okay, and it'll fix all that stuff. Okay, so. Let's do it to the one we just compiled. That way, you don't think I'm all. Actually, let's do it to this one. Okay. The actual build afterwards, you know, the actual build build itself, we have, we go into manage, and you know, this FPS gaming DLL, this is the one that's already being pre compiled with the game. Okay. The one we're actually shipping out and you know here's the whole thing we'll start it up I'll make sure it's nice and small that way it goes real fast and there you go do, do, do. come on and like so you see the game it works okay I can move I can do the zoomy stuff. Okay, so I'm going to exit the game now. Now let's move this FPS managed thingy. Uh, actually, that's not going to work because I didn't use the DLL files for it. But anyway, anyway, if we, and what I mean by this is I've got the original scripts for everything. When you have a DLL, you won't use the original script, you'll use the file that comes from the DLL itself. Which I should have showed that, but I showed it in the other video. And once you put it into Unity, you'll see what I mean. Because it'll come up, it'll look all weird right here, and then it'll fold down, and it'll have all the scripts compiled into that DLL. Makes it really handy and stuff, but not really necessary for what we're going to do we don't need this open okay so now for the cool part this is a application called IL spy we're gonna put it on C sharp because it's a C sharp project okay we're gonna take this FPS gaming DLL and we're just gonna drag it right in here well actually I think you can drag it anywhere in the board nope okay so let's drag it right here okay so now we got this assembly thing here okay our DLL now if you don't notice it it kind of looks like it's uncompiled right well if we go into Unity War Player okay that's our, our player script thing okay and we'll maximize this drag this over okay and this looks like our player movement script right right cool all right so this is our player movement script nothing fancy or anything like that just a player movement script okay so yeah that'd be great and we got base types okay well drive types or utility and we can go through our hierarchy and stuff, but the really cool thing about this is right here. Okay, let's say 
I delete. not showing any code for that really wait is it gonna be in something else still? probably in something else okay ah uh, yeah 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 it's gonna be in here see this is our run and we got our slot wait destroy weapon manager okay so let's say I deleted my weapon manager class thing and I'm really hurting because I literally broke my game so our DLL right here will be able it's already compiled so I really can't do anything with it too much but if I wanted to export it out of the DLL, it decompiles it automatically for me. And over here in my project, I saved it to here. So this is now my new script coming from the DLL, which could be an older version of it that worked before I literally broke everything, right? And it's it's already uncompiled for me. I mean, literally, it's the job's done for me, and I can literally go and edit this, right? I can go in here. Why is it so freaking big, man? Select all. How do you change the font size on this thing? Can I just go like? this or is it like whoa font size is way too big okay we'll just do this and we'll put it in eight we there we go not exactly ideal but you get the gist of it okay so now we've got our nice little code all you know extracted out of the dll and we can do whatever we want with it just like a regular script so that's how you can get your scripts out of the DLL that I showed you guys to compile now if you wanted to use this in unity the actual DLL files you let it do its import thing and well you know that's just the way it is, right? Okay, reload all because it's assembled. Okay. To use the DLL thing in your game, you basically have to take your DLL and this car controller. See, you can't look at it or none. That kind of sucks, right? But where you have a car controller, you're going to basically can I go into edit debug and change that car controller from here you are going to just basically overwrite the script and see how it does all that and it doesn't really look like it changed anything so now this car controller is using the DLL's file of it. So when we are when we want to change code, we can always overwrite this without rebuilding the project. As long as the file as long as we're using the DLL's file right here. Okay. The script in itself. The problem with it is, well, would there be, I don't believe if we overwritten this one, and the script is a new script that didn't exist when it was built, I don't believe it will be too happy with us, let's say that. It'll probably crash and be 
all buggy and stuff. That's the thing that I am working on right now to try to hurdle against. I think the idea is going to work a little bit later, but for the most part, I think you guys get the gist. You can use all the good stuff. You know, here's how to place a different car controller in there, you know, your DLL, and then, you know, the old script that you had for the car controller, you know, like all your other scripts, you could just delete them and use the DLL version. The reason why this has all these little thingies here, these warnings, is because the warnings are due to us having more than one of the same thing. Okay, ignoring the import type defined. So you shouldn't use a DLL in this. That's, a, that's what I'm going to recommend. Just, just have a lot of times. What I, I this is really useful if you have like people that's artists and stuff, and you want to just give them code. And then have them do all the tweaking with variables and all that stuff to make it look nice, okay? But then you got your scripting people that do all the, you know, the actual scripting part. But you don't want them to tweak around, like, stuff that would be very bad, right? Like, if you wanted to make this variable private so the center of mass is always going to be where it needs to be. Like maximum steer, you can always put this private. And because it's private and this is a DLL, I don't believe it will let me do anything with it. Okay? Because it's private, it can't be changed, right? If it's public, then it can be changed. But, you know. In a nutshell, that's what we're working on, okay? Now, I hope you find this video, you know, useful and all that other good stuff. If not, then, you know, there's the dislike button. But, uh, there's how to compile a DLL in Unity and uncompile it in such a way where you can extract your, your code out of it if something were to happen. You know, and, you know, how to easily swap over, you know, your DLL file for a car controller thing. You know, the, the DLL file versus the original. Because if you wanted to keep it from giving errors and stuff, and really doing funky stuff, you will put it into, I believe, Stream and Assets, and it will quit that. The conflict. That's probably what it'll be, right? Stream and Assets. Yep, Stream and Assets will break it. Nice. What was that? That was car controller, I believe, right? Yeah, there we go. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much how you can do everything. I I believe that'll help you in every way. When you put things in stream and assets, they don't exist until the game says, "Hey." instantiate them but they will take up memory they're just more of a, a streamlined type version but uh yeah so like hit subscribe and thanks guys for watching i know this isn't really a programming one but i think it's really nice for people to understand how to use a dll in unity 
compile it and uncompile. The compiling part's not really an issue, but the uncompiling, most people don't, they don't have a way of doing that. Now, it, I'll probably do another video sometime on how to block programs like this from uncompiling code, but uh, thanks for watching, guys, and peace out.